what's up guys my name is zach and today i am driving a 2023 volkswagen jetta gli autobahn up front is a 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four and down below is a seven speed automatic transmission now i am super excited to be driving this gli for one main reason I haven't driven one of these in several years. And so I think it's important to always re-up and see how cars are doing and how they've changed. I've never driven this generation, the seventh generation of Jetta with the GLI. And so I think there's plenty to talk about and I'm just excited to show you guys, I think one of the most overlooked cars currently on the market. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you but let's get back to that 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four under the hood making about 228 horsepower well this is what i like to call a bread and butter engine from volkswagen they put this engine in a lot of different vehicles we see it in the gti and golf r of course with different tunes but same engine we even see it in like the porsche macan at its base model so pick a volkswagen product it probably got this engine at some point and i like it they make good power for what they are it makes this car a lot of fun to drive like i said paired to it is a seven speed automatic transmission it is a dsg transmission which is a dual clutch which was one of the options here on this particular jetta gli there weren't tons of options but standard it comes with a six speed manual and you can opt for the seven speed automatic i actually prefer the seven speed automatic because it actually is a wonderful transmission and the manual transmission just aren't really that great the clutch is super numb the shifter is a little rubbery and so in terms of driving feel I actually prefer the automatic in this situation last but not least of course the Jetta GLI is front wheel drive so how does it feel to drive the Jetta GLI well it's a very nice experience it's a very grown-up and adult experience there's a lot of other vehicles in this segment like the Elantra N, Sonata N-Line, Honda Civic Si, Civic Type R those types of vehicles I know they're not all direct competitors with one another but in terms of sporty four doors there's a decent amount on the market Volkswagen seems to be be the most dignified and the most grown up out of its classmates. There seems to be an attention to detail of the driver's experience that's not just trying to be a hardcore sport car. And I like that. As I've grown older, I think I'm going to gravitate towards vehicles like this more and more. My boy racer era is starting to end, and so I'm more attracted to a car like this where I could drive it every day and leave it in comfort mode. However, if I want to have some fun on a back road, if I find some twisties on my way home from work, I can still have fun in a vehicle like this it's just more civilized than it is crazy where other vehicles are more crazy than they are civilized that being said steering is good it's not too stiff not too light throttle response is solid and the overall visibility is okay it's not amazing but i don't think any modern sedan or hatchback has amazing visibility these days and so it's right on brand with everything else currently available with that stuff out of the way let's talk about the interior well in front of me i have a mix of physical and digital gauges off to left and right we have little light up coolant and fuel gauges but then in the center it's completely digital so I get a tachometer on the left speedometer on the right and I love that the tachometer has this sort of trailing blue line as you rev it up I think that's a really nice touch and since they are digital gauges I'm glad to see them taking advantage of that we can switch through a couple screens here in the center as well nothing like terribly crazy no wonderful information but cool that you get some options on the steering wheel on the left we have our adaptive cruise options along with the volume and off to the right we have our page selector and view as well as skip track that we just talked about with the gauge cluster these are the haptic feedback buttons i don't love them i also don't hate them anymore i hated them at the start but i've sort of grown to not hate them as much the overall steering wheel is perforated leather wrapped it has this really nice stitching on it and it says gli down at the bottom just to remind you that you are special and off to the left we have a climate control vent and our headlight switches moving on to the door we have lock and unlock power mirrors and power windows and red stitching on the door card i like those little accents just to remind you 
that you're in something special. Moving into the center, we do have our infotainment system. Of course, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which are wireless. And here's the backup camera in case you're curious. I think the quality is fine. It could be better, it could be worse. It has one, I won't complain. However, the single thing that really annoys me about this infotainment system is actually the volume knob because it has a little power button icon on it. But as you rotate it, the icon is no longer straight up. And so unless you put the volume 75% of the way up or all the way down, the power button will never be properly up and down. And it's just an annoying tiny little thing that my OCD picked up on and now I can't see anything else. Down below we have two climate control vents and the hazard switch. And then we have a couple of interesting buttons for the climate controls. We do have heated and ventilated seats. Very, very nice to see that. Dual zone climate, auto climate, fan speed, sync, all of those great features found down below. And I really like the digital readouts you get for the climate controls. Then we do get two USB inputs, a wireless charger, and coming into the center console, we have the shifter, 12 volt outlet off to the right, engine start button to the left, along with the power parking brake, automatic start stop on and off, and our drive mode. So we do have four drive modes along with custom. So we have eco, normal, comfort, sport, and custom. And off to the right, we just have our traction control off button. Then we do have two cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test. And much like the Tesla Cybertruck, this also has octagonal cup holders and unfortunately much like the Cybertruck this vehicle also fails the big friggin bottle test <laughs> Then we get a center console and we'll talk about the seats. Like I said, they are heated, ventilated power and memory. And I like them. I think they're comfortable enough. I don't think it's like a beanbag cushion from my childhood, but I think they're comfortable enough in a sporty sedan like this. I don't really have any complaints. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2023 Volkswagen Jetta GLI Autobahn. And this is where the argument for the GTI and Golf R is gonna kind of stop because this has a lot more space, especially in the back than those vehicles. I don't dislike those vehicles. I actually like the GTI and Golf R a lot, but if you want a more full-size sedan, if you want something that you know you're gonna be taking more people in, this is definitely the way to go. The GTI and Golf R are like, oh, my niece is in town. I gotta drive her around for a week. Sure, we can make it work. The Jetta platform is, oh, I'm going to be driving people around a little bit more regularly let's make it comfortable to work. My knees are hitting the seat in front of me, but it can be moved up. It's still better than the GTI and Golf R. I do get a center console here as well, two cup holders found in the middle. What's missing is that I don't have any climate vents back here. So that is something I would have liked to have seen. So I'm relying on the front occupants to be nice and send their climate controls back here. Hot days, cold days, you might be a little uncomfortable but that's okay. Most vehicles in this segment don't do the rear climate vents, so I was just hoping that Volkswagen was better than the others. Let's hop out, we'll do a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. So around the back of the GLI, we do have a button here on the key fob, and the owner, Zach, loves to golf, so he always has to have his golf equipment with him, and that was a big drawing point towards this car, is that he could fit two golf bags in the back without much of an issue. So tons and tons of space in the trunk which i really really like to see and that is another big seller when it comes to the gli over the gti now we got to talk about the looks and i of course really like the look of the volkswagen jetta gli autobahn i really like this gray and this has the blackout package so the black wheels i like the little red accents i think that really adds a pop of color and i'm very very pleased with how this car looks i think it looks really really good and supposedly they're going to redesign it in the next couple years and move on to the eighth generation of jetta but i think for right now i think it's holding its own in the current market of still looking fresh enough and it hasn't gotten too old quite yet however with all of that being said let's get on to my final thoughts what do i think driving a 2023 volkswagen jetta gli autobahn well i like this car i don't think that's any mystery from what i've been saying there's a couple of little things that i would want changed i don't love the steering wheel buttons i don't love the volume button but those are drops in a bucket when it comes to a vehicle overall i wouldn't say i dislike the car because of those things the reason i wanted to make this video 
was that A, I haven't driven a GLI in a while and I think it's important to re-up on cars. But second of all, I don't think many people consider these when they want a sporty sedan. The GLI has been here in the US for decades at this point in some form or another. They did it in the previous generation. I drove a 2006, I did a 2012 and now I'm doing a 2023. And the story has always been the same. They're comfortable, quality Volkswagen products that happen to just be a little bit quicker than their siblings. But I think this car actually is really, really good, especially for the price. You could find these at the time for mid 30s. This particular car was 34,000, really 35,000. And the features that you get in here for that price are actually really, really solid. The ventilated seats aren't very common in other car makers. And even with the GTI, you really gotta pay money for those nicer features. The GLI comes with a lot of standard equipment that's very, very nice. Mid 30s nowadays is what $22,000 was 15 years ago. And it sucks that it's that way, but it is. And so if you look at it with that frame of reference, it's very, very well equipped for the price. And so I just want to get it out there. If you are starting your new car search, you want something a little bit more fun and engaging than your run of the mill Camry or Accord. The GLI is still out there. It's still just as good as it was several years ago, but with modern touches. And that to me is always very special to find when it comes to cars. I hope you enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Zach, spelled correctly, for letting me take out his Volkswagen Jetta GLI. Zach has been absolutely wonderful to work with. I appreciate his flexible schedule, allowing me to take this vehicle out and show you here today. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.